Okay, ladies, ladies, uh, keep it going, dude. Uh, please use the hashtag uh, Netflix, like Tough Ways. This dude plays seven people. Seven people, man. Like, super talented. Oh, I'm, I'm Quincy Harris. Uh, yeah, they came late. Uh, no, I'm sorry because you was my head because I came up in the beginning and you wasn't here. But no, hey, how you doing? All right, so, all right, I think so. We got, we got, we got, uh, we're going through some questions and answers, but I want y'all to stay in y'all seats because we got something for y'all, okay? Can y'all do that? Can y'all do that? Can y'all do that? So, let me take the picture. You ready? All right, well, right, right now, uh, let's give it up for the star of Sex Talk Liz Marlin. How you doing? Everybody good? You good? You play seven people. Seven. You play seven people. Give it up for all the way. I'm here, y'all. Yeah, I'm here. Nigga, I am still tired. I do. You can. I would be tired. Yeah. Oh, he took something out of me. Yes. Hey, kids. How y'all doing? And it was good for the whole family. Yes. Yes. I didn't show no body parts. So. I ain't hump nothing. This is this is a nice movie. Yeah. Yeah. You curse more than I did in that I movie. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Marlon, I'm hearing that you did this movie in 50 days. Yeah. It took us 50 days. Um, I was uh, and uh, it's a, a movie like this is supposed to take. Sit down because you're tired. We, okay. we got to get yeah, please. So. Uh, a movie like this is supposed to take 150 days um, to film, and it's supposed to cost like 100. And, something million dollars. Uh, this movie cost us, we did it for $28 million, and I shot it in 51 days, and I was three o'clock in the morning, I would do makeup for seven to eight hours, I would work 15 to 18 hours after that, I would, it takes an hour and a half to take the makeup off, and then I would go home and I would sleep for two and a half hours, get back to work, and repeat the same thing wow. for 51 days, and wow. so, I grind it, I put my soul in I ain't lying. Man. Ask this little, my angry little assistant right here. She, yeah. Am I lying? Nope. Yeah, like, why, so who's your, who's who your, your what happened? Huh? Who keeps the change? Who keeps the change? I don't know. What change? They ain't changed. I, I, I got paid less to do this movie. I had to divide it by seven. Ain't that something? Yeah, right? I did seven times the work. Who, who, who? I should have called she, Keith and Sean Clinton. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who was your, uh, your favorite character to play in them? The one with the least amount of makeup? Me. Yes. <laughs> I like me and I like Ethan, not just because it was the least amount of work, but I felt like Ethan and Alan were identical. And if I could pull, pull off Ethan and Alan being the same person, but like they're completely different, even though they look exactly alike, I thought that to me would, as an actor, would be like, oh, that's dope acting right there. So, yeah. For, I, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but watching this film, I'm like, okay, you separated yourself from and like people act but you like how they say now you act act in this film man no i put i i, yeah. I, I did my performing arts high school uh regiment in this I, I you had to create characters the concern is always man that's the clumps it's not it's a completely different movie all the characters completely different the interaction with the characters are completely different i'm in a scene with four of me as motion capture as the camera's moving i'm talking to myself and you forget that it's one guy playing all these different characters because you have to ground the characters but still make them all different. And I mean, uh, I mean that with the baby Pete, him being this little, <laughs> like, baby Pete is black people's favorite. Like, look at that little guy. <laughs> Man, so, uh, oh, Dawn, you like Dawn? Yeah, Dawn, crazy. She just so real ass. I forgot who you. I forgot it was you for a second. <laughs> I, like, I forgot it was me. Imagine that. Look in the mirror and you go going to pee and you look like a girl. Hey! hey. How, how tough was it for you to do ad-libs? Because I know you, you're really good off the top of your head. But if you do an ad-lib, you got to switch it up again and go back. You know, it's funny. This is how you know you made for it. You know, I, I, I've i been studying acting since I was five. And so for me, between 
I feel like the journey prepared me for this. I'm 47 now. I couldn't have do, done this movie at 20. I couldn't have done this movie at 30. I believe, you know, the acting, performing arts high school, all the plays I've been in, going back, doing stand-up, sketch comedy, um, a living color, white chicks, little man, you know, um, all the work that I've done over the past 47 years prepared me to do this movie. And it took every last ounce. At the premiere, I cried. And people was like, what is wrong with this nigga? No, because I didn't. I didn't realize how hard I worked. Like I, I, to not sleep for 50 days, and then to finally have it done and to be out. It, I felt like I was pregnant with a child, and it was like seven of them, and I just wanted them out of me. And, 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 you know what I mean? And then finally you gave birth, and I was like, I'm happy they got out, and I'm not why I'm crying. But I, I feel accomplished, man. I feel accomplished, and I'm proud. I'm proud. What does your, your family say about this film? <laughs> this is the first movie I've ever done <laughs> where my, my sister, right? My sister Kim, she's very critical. Her and, her and my mom, right? They're very critical because they want the best for me and they know all I can do. And my sister, she's funny because she'll go to premiere and she'll be like, I like this part. And then she'll tell me, I didn't like when you humped the stuffed animal. I didn't think that was necessary. <laughs> she keep it real. And this was the first movie. I sat there and I watched my sister laugh the entire movie. She called me the next day. She said, Marlon, this movie, this is so special. This was, this, I, there was no body parts um, swinging around. I didn't see your ass at all. You, you didn't hump nothing. She said, this was appropriate. This is not just good comedy. She said, this is what, not just what comedy needs. This is what the world needs. She's acting like this is going to cure world hunger. You should play this at the airport in Hong Kong where there's civil unrest. I'm telling you, all them people would just stop riding. And I'm just like, you know, but she's just so proud of me. And that made me feel good because I really, I work my ass off so that my family could be proud of me. You know, and it takes time. Dude, we're proud of you. Thank you. That's good. What we want to do, we want to take a couple of questions from the audience. Absolutely. I, I know you're super tired because you, you, no, uh, you took like some I just did Jimmy Fallon and drove from there, got in the car and from New York and came down here after, and I worked all day today since like six o'clock in the morning, so I wanna take their questions. All right. That's a big yawn, you tired too, huh? Like, okay, I saw your tonsil, that little thing. <laughs> all right, raise your hand, I'll run up to you. Okay, all right, y'all, if you're over there in the corner, you're gonna have to, well, scream, look, we're in the family, we're family, scream, the lady in the back. Yes. Oh, hi, my name is Jasmine. Can you stand up, baby, let me see. Okay. Thank you, baby. Hi, Jack Sizzle. How are you doing, bro? Uh, I'm myself an independent filmmaker, so what advice would you give to me to get to my team as an independent filmmaker who is working out of pocket uh, to produce films themselves? Don't do this. Uh, <laughs> this is aggressive. And if I were you, I would. when I'm writing my, my, my films, you want a low-budget film. Haunted House was a movie I did. And you know that's where I first me and my brother stopped working together, and I started building me as a as a, a solo act. I started from scratch, and I did a movie for a million dollars, a haunted house, and we filmed it one location. Remember this, one location, not a lot of cast members, controlled environment, and one location that you could turn into many locations, and um, you want to film it in as little amount of days as humanly possible. And that's the best way to do something like that. Okay? All right? All right. Thanks, and the content, you know, it's funny. Like, you don't need to do a lot. People really like great conversations and wonderful characters. If you can put those together with some fun situations, it don't have to be over the top. It just has to be, like, clever. You know what I mean? You got it, baby. Go get them. All right. Go get them. Don't stop. If the first one bomb, it don't matter. The 40th one will hit. You just keep on digging, never stop. You only fail when you quit trying. All right, all right. Is that right here? Because I'm still digging, God damn it. Man. <laughs> How you doing, sir? Thank you for your movie. It was very entertaining. Uh, Thank you. 
You got a deep voice, but it's real soft. White Chicks 2, uh, you asking me if I did this damn movie? I just did White Chicks 7. I'm, I'm, I'm tired, I don't want to see no damn makeup. I just want to be a black man for I want to be a black man in like 10 movies, then I'll do a White Chicks 2. Because these are a lot of work, man. White Chicks was a lot of work, but I'll say this, the fans deserve a White Chicks 2, and it's on the studio to put up the money so we could do it, because you know what I can't do is not sleep again for 51 days. That, I'm not trying to die, man. I, I, this movie almost killed me. Like, cause I started out when I started doing the movie, I was like 170 pounds. I was working out every day, 180 pounds. I was looking good, and then I was only sleeping two and a half hours a day, so I couldn't work out at all. So I put on 20 pounds, and the fat suit got real tight on me. <laughs> like my fingers would go numb. Like I get dizzy. I, it's hot. I'll be sweating. It stinks. It smells like belly button in there. <laughs> It's not a fun movie to do, but I, I mean, I hope that, and it's funny because when I, when I did the movie, I, looked, I, um, I, I got a compliment like Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, Martin Lawrence, guys that did it before me, because they made it look so easy. But you don't know how hard it is until you do it. And then you want to say, I love you, but F you. You should have told me this was a hard ass process. <laughs> Did you, did you talk to, you know, the Eddie Murphy? The, it, I did Norbit with Eddie, right? Okay. And when I did Norbit with Eddie Murphy, Eddie, uh, I used to ask him while we was filming our scenes, I'd be like, cause I, I was the tap dancing truck instructor, right? And so I did my one, two, three, four, I stepped the poop, better wipe it off. And so we did our scene and Eddie laughed, he saw my scene, he laughed, and then after we had another scene together and I was like, so man, this is a lot of fun, you get to do all the makeup and everything, and he was in his makeup, and Eddie looked at me, he looked real cold through the makeup, he said, hey man, this is work. I said, yeah, but you know, you're doing all these characters, and you know, the, I love the boys, he said, hey, hey, nigga. I said, this is work. So flash forward to me finally doing this movie, right? I'm in makeup, my nephew comes to set, he's all happy, oh come on, you get to do all these different characters, and I was dressed like Dawn. I said, hey, nickel, this is work. <laughs> yes, any other questions? Raise your hands, raise your hands. She got a question, yes ma'am. Yes, ma Can you speak really loud? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna I'm gonna give you the microphone, I'm gonna give you the microphone. Y'all clap when it's your face. Hello, what is your name? Say yeah. Say yeah. I say yeah. Oh, she wants to act. You, you want some advice? Yeah, she, want, she, wants she, to act. she wants to act. She wants to be in movies. Oh, when I was your age, I used to want to act. And you know what you got to do? Start going and doing every play at your school. If there's a play, you audition. Even if they say, Cinderella's white, no she ain't. Cinderella gonna be you, so you go do it. You can be anything you wanna be. Don't try and let them make you the, the little mouse or the evil sisters, the nah, I'm Cinderella, boo. And you go do it, okay? And then you, when I was, when I got a little older, I learned to write movies. So watch movies and start writing movies, even at your age. And one day, when you get my age, you'll be doing it, I guarantee you. And don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. You're welcome. Even your mama, she trying to tell you, you can't do that. I small and said I can do this. We have this young lady right here. Yes. Uh, everybody got to hear the question. Sarah, stand up. Let them, let them loud so everybody hear. Um, so with a movie where you're playing so many characters, it's obviously so important to have like distinct voices for everyone. Yeah. So I was just wondering like, if you had any inspiration for all the various characters' voices or how you found them. The inspiration for every character's voice honestly came from a different place with each one. It's like I didn't have a process on how to build the characters. Like Russell, Russell's voice came from my roommate Steve. I went to college with Steve and all he ever did was one day he used to my house. And he never left. He used it for everything. He did the only thing he left me out was this stupid little voice. So I was like, I'm gonna use that pretty much. He didn't pay rent so I'm gonna get it back from Groovy. And then Dawn, Dawn, it was funny because Dawn came from the hands. 
So everything Dawn was doing came from, I just watched some sisters talking one day, and they was like, oh, boo, oh, no, boo, they was talking just like this. And I was like, oh, so they're talking like this. So Dawn came from the hands, boo, and then I talked, looked at my sisters, and my sister, I threw two of my sisters together, and I said, I want her to have my Devon's breasts and Elvira's hair. And, <laughs> and, and, and I, their mannerisms, and that's how it created Dawn. Uh, Jasper, I was like, it'd be really funny to have the black sheep of the family be really, really light skinned. And then <laughs> I want to give him red hair because I thought him with freckles could be really funny and kind of sinister. And then uh, Ethan, I just felt like Ethan, he just reminded me like a, a pimp that never made it. So then, <laughs> once I popped that gold tooth in my mouth, I just, I just knew who the, who the hell, hell Ethan was. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, who was the other one? Uh, Oh, baby, I, I had a sick cousin that was in the hospital. They got me. <laughs> that little nigga passed away, baby. Just like this. <laughs> so it's what I'm saying to you is that, you know, I, I truly believe in God. And I truly believe in your purpose that inspiration, life, God is in everything that we do. Yes. And when you have a purpose, you can take the worst situations and put it into your purpose and come out with some goal. And you know, no matter how painful, whatever the situation is, that you can, I can do something like this that's so painful to me that can bring joy to other people. And that's how I know on purpose, how I can take life, no matter what situation and go, oh man, this could be funny. I swear, me and my brothers, we are crazy people. We'll be sitting at funerals. <laughs> And everybody think we crying and we laughing. <laughs> They're like, what's wrong with you niggas? I was like, well, did you see his shoes? <laughs> there is no way he getting in heaven with those shoes. <laughs> All right, let me see. We have time for two more. Yes. Okay. Raise your hand. Anybody have a question? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Ajane and Hi. Oh, Marlon. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> and my friend Dana, we recently went on a trip and we worked it into our schedule where we went to the beach, took a break, and watched exactly three episodes of Marlon, and then went back out to the beach for four, and then came back and watched another three episodes. Wow. That's love. That's love. Thank you. That's love. Um, that, that's a show that there's no reason why. That show did not do 100 episodes. And, you know, I think NBC owes everybody an absolute apology because to me, that was like a sitcom that belonged on the air. And they didn't have to get it. We got it. And I appreciate all y'all watching it. Um, but, I, but once again, I'll say this. I want to, yeah, but I, you know what? I, once again, I'll say this. If God closes a door, that means this other door is open. If that show is ended, that means that God wants me to dig deeper. I got something better to deliver. I just got to work a little harder for it, and that's when it's going to happen. So everything happens for a reason. God don't make mistakes. I trust him. I trust this journey. I trust my journey, and I'm happy that y'all got the smiles, but I got something better for you coming. Uh, who else got a question? Her, and then what? Who else? You had a question, sir? All right, let me go with her, and then I'll, I'll come to you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. It was a very, very funny movie. Thank you. Um, Jason, was it a better deal to go to Netflix versus Hulu? Yeah. Thank you. It was it a better deal to go Netflix instead of releasing it in theaters? It was. It's not that it's a better deal. It's just that nowadays, and this is why people need y'all to go support in the box office. What you're gonna find sooner or later is everything's either gonna be a superhero movie or some big action movie. And they're not gonna have comedies or people of color in movie theaters if you don't go support your movies and your artists, okay? But here's the beauty. At your home, you can get Netflix and you can watch all your favorite people. I, I, the beauty of Netflix is I put it on worldwide. You ain't got to leave your house. You can make your house a movie theater because this is where it's going. So buy some popcorn. Have, this is a movie. I specifically made this with family in mind. I could watch this with my entire family on one television and we can all laugh because when it's laughter, it's infectious. This is a movie you want to see in, in a, a theater with a crowd, crowd of people. 
but you can make your home a theater. And the beauty of Netflix is they embrace diversity and they embrace comedy. And you know, if you look at uh, Netflix right now, Chappelle is on there with a new special coming up. I'm on there with a special. I'm on there with a movie. Chris Rock is on there with a movie. Kevin got a special on there. Diversity and comedy. So it's a wonderful place and a wonderful home. And so make your home a movie theater. And for $13.99, you ain't got to buy, even buy nine tickets. <laughs> you ain't got to get the good popcorn. You can get bad popcorn, they don't care. But uh, yeah, so you know, but but I, I feel you on that. But um, um, but make your house a movie theater. I ask everybody to do that and tell me about the experience. Uh, yes, sir, in the back. Yeah, well, my question was about your how you connect Netflix and also how you develop the concept of sex. Sextuplex is a movie that I I've been developing for literally seven years, maybe not, maybe eight. Eight years, I always knew I wanted to do this movie, and we took it around town, and Hollywood thought, it, we, I was crazy, there's no way you can play seven characters, there's no way. At one point, it was eight characters, because I wanted to play a white guy. <laughs> I'm glad that we wrote that junk out. So, <laughs> um, um, everybody thought I was crazy, but I had did Naked with Netflix, and it was a, number one in 193 countries. It was a, a really big success, and it was like, what do you want to do next? And I was like, I, I want to do the impossible. I have this movie called Sex Templates, and I love the story because it, it's about family. I come from a big family, so it's a message that I want to deliver to not just the world, but to my community because family is everything, especially when you come from, uh, for me, I come from a big, black, crazy family. And we are in love, and y'all watch our family in love. Y'all get the good stuff. Y'all don't see behind the camera. Well, my sister throwing pie on Damon's head, y'all. But, <laughs> but that's we put and, and put that into our work. But the message of family, which is no matter how crazy they are, no matter um, how much you may not get along, no matter how much they need from you, one day you can rely on your family more than you can anybody else to get you out of jail. And that's a beautiful message that goes in here. It's one of the reasons. One of the reasons I stopped doing parodies because I wanted to make movies that had sentiment, that make you feel something. Our parodies was fun, but parodies is a joke, just jokes. Same with sketch, it's just jokes. And what I love about like these movies I'm doing now, and even Marlon, the sitcom, it was really funny, but it had really good stories. And so that's when I'm leaning to what I'm never gonna abandon comedy because that's my first love and there's nothing feels better than me than putting smiles on people's faces. So. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. Well, listen, the movie comes out tomorrow on Netflix. Please tell your friends to tell a friend and watch it again and again and again. Can we give it up for the ultra? Thank you so much. Really, I'm going to be back here in November performing at the Punchline, and I'm going to be in D.C. at the MGM National Harbor Theater September 14th. Come see me live. That's a special special right there. I love y'all. Thank y'all. God bless. Thank you, baby.